Okay, we'll do. Okay. All right. You guys, he's leaving. He didn't even say thank you for hosting me. Nothing. He just asked about the glasses that he ordered that are supposed to come in my house. After all of these weeks of paying for his expenses, doing his laundry, helping him out with all his paperwork, proofreading letters to embassies, driving him around DC, picking him up at the airport in New York, all the stuff we've done here. All he can say is, if my glasses are here, if my glasses are here, let me know. He can't even say thank you. That's a Mawa for you guys. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in to part two of this drama that's happening between the Polish girl Paulina, Ivan, and I am Mara. If you have not seen part one, which I just uploaded yesterday, please check that out. You can check out that video after you watch this one or before. All right, but maybe before so it can make sense of what's going on. But either way, it's fine. So in the video that I put up yesterday with um, Paulina's interview, some of you did not believe her story and some of you did. Some of you came after me saying that I hate Mara and I'm going to make that clear. I do not hate Mara, but I'm going to say this. After everything that I've learned since I met him and even before I met him, I do not like Mara's character and I do not like his behavior and some of the stuff that I hear about him, you know. Because where there's smoke, there is fire. So again, I do not hate him. I don't know him personally. But from what I'm hearing from different sides, I can say that I do not like his behavior and his character. Okay? So this girl, when she came to me to share her story, I really didn't really have a side. You know? But I, but I have a platform. And she came to me to tell her side of the story because she was being dragged all over YouTube being made to look like a bad person. Okay. So at the platform, she came to me and I gave her a voice. All right. I have no bone in this fight, but I'm a truth teller. And I always like people to know the other side of the story. And that's the only, that's the only reason why I gave Paulina a platform, you know, and after speaking to Paulina a bit more, you know, I like Paulina now, you know, and actually I'm going to say this. I stand with Paulina. Some of you don't believe her and some of you do, but the fact have to speak for themselves. Paulina is 18. I have a copy of her passport as you can see on the screen. She's an 18 year old girl. She just turned 18 last month in March. So when Mara started pursuing her sexually, she was under 18. And Mara is in his 30s and sometimes people say in his 40s. So he's an old man. And this girl just turned 18. Those of you who are looking past that fact and trying to accuse this girl and me and everybody for having an agenda, what is wrong with you? Do you think it's okay for an adult, a grown man, to pursue little girls? In some countries, some cultures, that's considered child abuse. And if what Paulina said Mara did to her sexually, that's considered sexual abuse or assault. So you guys, I'm here to give this girl a voice. Some of you accuse me of, you know, I should, I should be ashamed of myself because I'm a black woman and I'm taking a white girl's side. No. I don't care what color you are. If I believe there's at least some truth in what you are saying, I'm going to give you a voice. She's also a woman. I'm a woman. Okay? She's a child compared to Aymara who's a grown man. Okay? So just because I'm black and she's white, to me that means nothing. She's a human being. I'm not the type to defend nonsense. I don't care if you're my family member or if you are my friend. Or if you are what? I always stand on the side of truth, on the side of justice, if I believe there's some truth in it. So yes, you can come after me. Good luck. I've never backed down from a good fight. 
And I don't mean to brag, but when I stand behind something, trust me, I see it through all the way. I don't quit. Again, I stand with Paulina. And I encourage other women out there and men who believe in child welfare should also stay with Paulina. I don't care what Paulina's lifestyle is. She's 18. She just turned 18. She's a kid. You were once a kid. Didn't you make mistakes? Didn't you make wrong choices? So why should we judge Paulina for her lifestyle? People are, are saying she's an escort. She's a S worker. That's beside the point. An adult, a grown man took advantage of her. And even if she participated willingly, that's beside the point. I am Mara is a Kenyan man. In Kenya, the age of consent is 18. Aemara is way above 18. And when he started pursuing this girl, you see the receipts in a minute, this girl was under 18. He was inviting this girl to Kenya when she's under age. Going against the Kenyan laws. This girl is Polish from Poland. The age of consent in Poland, I think, is 15 or 16. But that's based on other kids in the same age range. It doesn't mean an adult in his 40s and 30s can come and mess with little kids who are 16 and 15. No. The age of consent might be 15 and 16, but it applies to those who are under 18. So either way you cut it, no matter how you try to defend Aymara or not, this girl was underaged. Mara is a grown man. And Mara was breaking Kenyan laws of age of consent because he was pursuing this girl when he was in Kenya. You see the receipts. So you can see the and bash this girl all you want. You don't have to believe her. The facts will speak for themselves. And if a woman out there sticking up for a grown man, defending a grown man who took advantage of a little girl, you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't care how you think famous Aymara is. I don't care about titles. I don't care about status. I care about the truth. And I care about st standing up for those who people may not believe. Standing up for those who cannot defend themselves for whatever reason. I'm giving this girl a voice, a platform to also tell her story. Because all you guys were dragging her all over the internet, calling her names. That is not right. Come after me all you want, but good luck. You're not going to defeat me. You are not going to defeat me. So good luck. With that said, again, I stand with Paulina. I stand for the truth. I stand for justice. And here are the receipts. And after the receipts, I bring on the interview with Ivan, who discuss more stuff related to this matter. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Let's go. Uh, with me on this um, video, I have Ivan. I then is also a YouTuber. He travels around the world um, to many different countries. And um, he is also, I guess, an ex-friend of Aemara. Um, some of you do know who Aemara is. He is also a traveler from Africa. And also, uh, we are doing this live or this video because of what has transpired um, during Aemara's visit in America. So, Ivan, please introduce yourself to those watching this video. So, hi, my name is uh, Ivan, and my channel's name is uh, iVentures. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like to travel around uh, every chance I get. Um, do you consider yourself a passport, bro? I don't know the negative connotation associated with that. Um, this is a funny thing. I'm a black man who travels. So, if that's what a passport, bro, is, then yeah. But I know the connotation is black men looking for women out there, and that's not what I do. That's not what my travel with my channel is about. Uh, that definitely doesn't define me. I'm a single guy, and I travel the world in different places all around as much as I can. I'm not traveling for the purpose of women. I think that traveling just for that is very limiting, and uh, I'm, a lot, I'm about a lot more than just that. You know, there's a lot more to do in the world than seeking women. That's true. I totally agree. 
And I, you're from Africa too, right? Last time I spoke to you, so you were from Cameroon, correct? Correct, yes. Because people are saying you also maybe from Haiti. Hey, listen, people have said that I'm gay. They say that I have stole his girlfriend. They say I don't own my house. I'm renting. They say that I got kicked out of my house. Listen, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. But I am proud to be from Cameroon. I am from Cameroon originally. And uh, whoever wants to believe otherwise, that's their problem, not mine. You are a proud African. Yes. Okay, so thank you for making that clear. So tell me, how did you and Aymara meet? Okay, so I was watching his videos a while ago, and uh, I, I don't know if it was like two years ago or so, and uh, we started talking, maybe a little bit longer than that, and uh, he was coming to D.C. So um, I told him, hey, if ever you come to D.C., you know, you can come over, I host you no problem, like many people do. So uh, I actually traveled to Colombia, and I was out there having a vacation. When well, he reached out to me, telling me he was in D.C., and at the end of my vacation, I came back home, picked him up, and he came home. Okay, that's okay. That's great. So what? So when he came to America this year, he came end of March, end of March, right, twenty twenty three. Uh, some, yeah, around March, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you invited him, or it was already a trip he planned by himself? Listen, uh, I thought we were friends, right? So I knew he was coming here to apply for visas. And he really didn't have to ask me. It was more like, I'm coming to D.C. And uh, he didn't even have to ask. I didn't have to suggest it. It was just like, he knew if he's coming here, this is his home in D.C. Because last year, I assisted him so it only made sense that if he needs my help again, I'll be more than happy to do just that. So right. I didn't say Ma will come over. I didn't know where he was going. Nobody knows his plans, you know. He, he moves around quite a bit and uh, is unplanned. So I got a phone call, I believe on the Tuesday, something like that. And he told me he was landing in New York on Thursday and he would like me to come and get him so we can spend a few days in New York and then come to DC. I said, no problem. So I took time off work. I went up there, and uh, when I arrived, I found out he's actually not there. So I texted him, <laughs> and I said, hey, man, when are you landing? And uh, he said, uh, I'm actually in Kenya. I'm landing tomorrow. He never apologized even about, you know, giving me the wrong day. But anyways, there's enough to talk about without getting into that. So I picked him up, and uh, we spent a few days in New York, and then we drove down to D.C. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, you said he came to renew to apply for visas. People are saying that you can't, it's, it's a foreigner who's not an American citizen, you cannot apply for visas in Washington, D.C. for other countries. Listen, that I, don't, I don't know, I don't work for the embassies. I certainly cannot speak for them. But one thing I didn't understand, because I asked him this, I said, bro, why don't you apply for visas from Kenya? So that when you get out of the country, you already have your plans, you know, and, you know, he never gave me a, a precise answer why he didn't or doesn't. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I know last year when he came, he was trying to get a European visa. He had difficult times. He had a difficult time getting, you know, um, visas processed for some countries here because they said you're not from the country, even though you have uh, the right to be in the U.S., you cannot apply here. So that is true. Some embassies told him that. But I also know that he has been in the past successful in getting visas processed from here. So... I don't think there's a hard set rule as far as like where you need to be to apply. I just think that it makes his traveling much more difficult for him because uh, he wants to leave and, and travel and create content outside the U.S. That's mostly what he wants to do. So when he's here for a long period of time, he's wasting the time that he has, uh, you know, processing all of this. And it's bringing a lot of stress. And as what I thought I was a friend, I was more than happy to help him out with the process as much as I can. But I get into that later on. Okay, no, I totally understand. So tell me, so we are here mostly because you and you keep you and Mara are no longer friends as we speak right now, correct? Correct. I, I don't actually, I, actually to use his words correctly, he said he has no friends. This is even before this issue happened. Uh, I thought we were. I know he uses that. I challenged them on this in person when he was here. What do you always say that you don't have friends, but you are more than happy to ask for a place to stay, ask for a ride, ask for help for this, ask for all kinds of things, you know. You don't hesitate to ask. And that's really the only time you hear from him is when he needs you for something. And, you know, I like Mawa, you know what I'm saying? I like the guy. So I was always willing to bend over backwards for him. 
So it, I never hesitated to do what I could to help them out in any way possible. And some people are saying, well, it's because I want YouTube, whatever. He's the one that told me to open a YouTube channel, you know, and uh, I never really wanted to do that. He filmed over here last year. I didn't even have a channel. I opened my YouTube channel when he left, you know, and then we met in New York and I went over there. I was barely starting my channel. My channel is about traveling. My channel is not about me. I want people to go out and explore the world. And I feel like I'm blessed to be able to do that. So I want to bring that content to life. I don't want to say things about me. This is not what I do. This is not what my channel is. And if you watch my videos, you realize that that's not what I do. So um, we're no longer friends. That's the correct thing. But the proper thing is really that we were never friends. Because according to him, he doesn't have friends. Something that he confirmed on the message that he wrote on his YouTube uh, community a couple of days ago. So yeah, I mean, I was shocked to hear that, uh, you know, uh, from someone else, it just confirms it. But he means it when he says it. He does not have friends. He means it. He means right. It. Yeah, I read that as well. Okay, so tell <clears throat> before, okay, I know you mentioned about the YouTube, that he helped you start the YouTube. And yesterday or this morning, I and Mara put out a post on his YouTube community tab telling all his followers who subscribe to you to unsubscribe from you because of your fallout. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so I thought that was a bit interesting because, you know, people are saying that, yeah, he helped you build your YouTube channel from 3,000 followers <laughs> to 11 plus K. But me, as an outsider, I'm thinking, you were also a friend to Mara. He came to America. You were driving him around using your own money, your own time, and you hosted him in your house for free. And staying yeah. in this area in America is not cheap. Because no. in, Ma in Mara's own words, he said that if it wasn't for you, as his host and others, he would pay 300 US dollars a day to be in America. So now compare 11K plus um, subscribers, 7 plus K that he gave to you, to you spending that much time and money to help him build his content also you know you helped him make blogs he didn't pay you for those blogs so really him telling people to ascribe from you i think that's a little bit unfair because you also put in time helping him make his content in america that he is getting paid for but he's not refunding you for that time and money yeah so look um it's unfortunate that this is the way he chooses to to act and uh, towards you know me in this situation. Problems happen. There's no relationship without issues. You know, you can be married, you have issues with your spouse. It doesn't mean you have to get a divorce. You can be friends, you have a fallout. It doesn't mean that you have to stop being friends. Honestly, when he left my house that day, um, I didn't know that that was the end. I didn't know. I knew he had to go. I wanted him to go because there was a time where I felt like, you know, I can take, I can take, I can take. I finally got to the point where I was like, you know what? I, this, I cannot take anymore. He has to go, right? So Mawa support is something that I have appreciated. I told him that in person. I am thankful for his uh, expertise in uh, the creation process. Something that, you know, we have disagreed on, on many occasions, but he's been doing it for seven years. Mawa knows a lot about you. This is, this, is, this is what he does all day long, every single day. So I'm thankful that I was, have, I was able to meet him. I am thankful for everything I've learned through him. But this was a mutual relationship. I drove him places up and down. I've helped him. I gave him ideas. The videos the Like every time he's here, like I do everything. We went last year we went to Philadelphia. My car. He, he doesn't he doesn't spend most of the time like I paid for 99.9 part .9 of the world to together. I right. paid for everything. So now, you know, he has posted my house without asking me. Last time he just started filming here and I was like Yo, you know, maybe you don't film here, don't film there. He always wants to film things. Eventually, I'm like, you know what? Fine, that's it. Go ahead, film whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? But he's very, very like, the only way you get along with Mawa is if you do what he says. If you mm -hmm. don't, he gets very angry. So now here we are. This man has my videos online, is making money with collaborations we made. And I realized that he's the popular guy here, but a collaboration is exactly that, a collaboration. When I'm on the video, 
is also maybe attracting some of the people who wouldn't necessarily watch him. And, you know, it was mutually beneficial because if Mawa doesn't have anything to benefit from you, he's not going to be your friend, period. That's just the way he operates. So amazing to me that he now says to people to unsubscribe. <laughs> it's like, you know, hey, if people feel like Mawa can tell them jump and they jump, sit and they sit, so be it. Because I am confident in myself, in the content that I have and that will keep bringing that I will attract other people that will come with no drama on my page. So whoever feels like they need to unsubscribe from my page because Mawa said so, guys, it's unfortunate, but I will see you next time around. Because I'm not going to stop posting YouTube videos because of this situation, I'm not. Right. No, I totally understand. So tell so tell us, how did you guys fall out? How did you guys get, get from being good friends one week and then a few days later, tall enemies? What happened? So, in a nutshell, I think you, you spoke to the, the lady involved in this. And, yes, Paulina. Uh, you, yeah, you heard most of the stuff, you know. So, the reason, there's, there are two reasons why we are no longer friends. So, let me let me get into the first one that most people don't even know. When Mawa left me alone with this girl here on that Saturday, he gave my address to someone I didn't even know. He left my house. He asked me for the gecko. That's it. He said somebody named Brian is gonna come pick him up. Within two minutes, he got picked up. I didn't like the fact that Mawa is giving away my home address without telling me. I didn't appreciate that at all. But, you know, this is the US, you know, anything can happen. Before you give my home address, check with me first. It's just basic respect. But this is the stuff that he does. So he didn't ask the girl if she needed to eat. He didn't tell her where he was going. He didn't tell us when he was coming back. He didn't tell her anything. Same thing with me. He just left with his friend and he was gone all day long. Now, in the midst of that, he texted someone else about me and said that we are not friends and he's going to let me know at the end of the month. I got that text message, you know. So basically what he was trying to do is to stay in the house as long as he needs benefit for me driving him to the bank every day so he can move money around take him to embassies even the morning he left me like that with that girl he asked me to proofread the letter for him for the embassy i proofread the, the letter i typed i did everything he needed i thought we were cool and then he leaves me with this girl here all day who does that she doesn't know me i don't know her why would you do something like that you know and then he just bounced so when I got the text message that Mawa said we're not friends and he's going to let me know at the end of the month, that, that to me was the end right there. Because among everything that was going on, I'm not going to have someone in my house who's telling other people that we are not friends. If you have a problem with me, be man enough to say, hey, Ivan, I don't appreciate this, I don't appreciate that. Why do you need to text someone and say something like this? It is so rude and just uncomfortable. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done. You know, so that's what's going on with that. The second reason why we are not friends is because sexual harassment is a serious thing. And the behavior he displayed in my house was uncalled for, was scary. And I'm in the house, I'm the oldest guy here. And we are three black men with one white girl who's 18 years old. Anything can go wrong. And I had to stop it. I had to stop it. I didn't want things to go and get worse. Because honestly, I could have packed up his stuff and leave it outside the house and say, Mawa, you know what? When you come home, just grab your stuff and go. Because my house is not a hotel. You don't just come in and go when you want to. At least tell me, hey, I'll be back in a couple of hours, especially when you're leaving your girl behind, you know? So don't, don't come out here and go in without telling me, you know, I need to know when you're coming back. It's my house. He doesn't have to ask me for permission or anything, but at least let me know I'll be back in an hour, I'll be back in a couple of hours or anything. I was more than happy for him to welcome this girl here. You know, I didn't have a problem with that. But, you know, things didn't work out between them. And now I'm getting thrown in the, in the mix with this whole thing, you know. But he was very aggressive towards her. She got turned off. She requested to sleep in a different room because she said she's not comfortable with him any longer. I gave her another room. And then everything just went south from there because I had two options. I either had to get very, very mean to this man, or just tell him, hey, you know what, go. So I thought about the white guy, and I told him that my uncle passed away. The reason I said that is because I wanted him to peacefully leave, because 
I was so angry at that time, and Mawa does not listen. We were gonna get into something much worse. So the best thing I could do was to tell the young lady, make your own arrangement, call your friends, call your parents, whatever you need to do, get some money, and go. But because you're young, check with me every day until you leave this country so I know that you're fine. And to him, when he came back, I said, bro, my uncle passed away, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I did that so he could go peacefully without us getting into a very bad argument. Because I was so upset with him. That's what I decided to do. Okay, no, I totally understand. So, yeah, so I, I totally hear what you're saying. And I know you referred to her as his girl. So was that his girlfriend or she denied no, it? No. He, it's not his girlfriend. When I when I meant by his girl, and I probably shouldn't say that with all the speculations going around, I've never, uh, I've never uh, meant to say that that's his girlfriend. That's his, that's his guest. Uh, my understanding is uh, that's the second time that they meet, that they met. And honestly, listen, we are here right now because Mawa could not convince a girl he paid $1,000 to fly here to sleep with him. This is why we're here. Because if Mawa was, you know, even a little bit gentle with her, she knew that the expectation was sexual. She knew that. She's a young 18-year-old girl. She wanted to take a trip and enjoy herself. We were all 18 at some point. Is this stupid? Yes, it is. But guess what? Women fly all day, every day to meet guys they don't know. This is not an unknown thing. But when you are 18 and you want to maybe come and visit the U.S. the second time with a guy that maybe you like, I don't think that she should be blamed for this, you know. But Mawa is the adult in the situation. Here. He's the adult. And I can tell you, his approach with women is not something that I'm breaking ground here. You guys all know. Anybody who watches them, you guys know he doesn't take no for an answer. You know, when he got no trouble, you saw so his reaction. He gets very, very angry. This girl told him she was not ready to go there. He, he kept pushing it. He kept pushing it. He kept pushing it. And then he sends me a message. He told me, why am I talking more with her? I should leave the kitchen and go upstairs so she can go follow him. So what he wanted to set up is a situation where this girl is so uncomfortable, she has no choice but to go in the bedroom with him. Well, guess what? It's my house. I'm going to sit in the kitchen and entertain any guests that I have. My wife doesn't get to tell me where to go in my own house. I already gave him a private room with a bathroom. He went too far and I lost my mind. I went upstairs and I said, bro, are you crazy? Don't come in my house telling me where to go. I mean, like, I'm welcoming you, you guess. Now you're telling me where to go in my own house? I mean, come on. All he had to do, honestly, was to sit there, just have a normal conversation with her. Eventually, they were going to go to sleep. He didn't even have to do anything. But he is so horny that he couldn't even hold on just a little bit. This girl just got off the airport. Like, we were home for maybe 30 minutes when all this transpired. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I can definitely uh, I can definitely understand how he could be tired. At the same time, um, I'm not sure if you know Mara's age. Some people say he's in his 30s, some say 40s. Do you have his age confirmed? Because I just feel like that girl is way too young, even at 18. This is the thing. I didn't even know she was 18. When we picked her up at the airport, she looked really young to me. Uh, that's when I asked her how old she was. And she told me she was 18. Uh, she just turned 18, like I think last month. So I knew he was talking to her before that, obviously. So you think about the age here, and it, it, was, it was troublesome for me. Uh, but whatever, she's on legal age now. But now she's, you know, flying here, staying in my house. He's staying in my house. I got my cousin over here. So it's three of us, all of us grown men with this 18 year old girl. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Imagine if she called the police again. I was yeah, like, in no a, way, no way. Right, yeah. In America, 18 year old white girl with three black men, and if she calls the police, you all are going down. That's it. So, oh, and then you so have this guy. First. Yeah, who is so mad, so angry. I can't tell you how mad he was. I went off for him because I tolerated Mawa in my kitchen filming anything, doing whatever he wanted. I tolerated him with a whole bunch of mess that, you know, I can't even describe to you how difficult it was. But I tolerated it because I knew eventually he's going to go. But when I'm so nice and now you feel comfortable telling me that I should leave my kitchen to go in my room, that I felt was too much. Imagine if I went to his mansion and I told him that. Just imagine that for a second. He was too comfortable in my house, too comfortable, and he just went too far. 
you know, and when you're not dealing with harassing, because he cannot take no for an answer, you know, I could hear everything he was telling that girl. The next morning when she was talking to him, he kept talking about how he doesn't need her. He has many other girlfriends. Mawa cannot pull an American girl. Let's get this straight. If we could, he wouldn't spend a thousand dollars to fly to go over here, you know? So his, his character, his personality, whatever he's doing, does not work for women here. And that's the reason why he brought the girl from Europe to this, to this house. And it's like, okay, now you can't even be cool. You can't convince an 18 year old girl to spend the night with you after you spend a thousand dollars. But you're mad at me. I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, that that is it's interesting. And also a lot of people on um, online are saying that you, you gave an underage girl alcohol in your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean that. And a lot of people do are saying that don't even know they weren't here. First of all, I have alcohol all over my house. It's all over my kitchen. You see on the videos, I have alcohol here. Mawa told her, make yourself at home, have a drink. And I can tell you between me and you, she didn't even drink it. She didn't even drink it. He offered, this happened, I told you, within like 15, 20 minutes. The rest of the time was me telling her, go talk to him, go talk to him, go talk to him. So she went up there multiple times. I did the same thing multiple times, and we were not able to do that. Mawa offered his friends to spend the night in my house without asking me first. This has happened with another, you know, girl that we recorded with. You know, uh, on the last two videos I posted, he told her at the end of the interview, you can just have a sleep here, just have a sleep. And she's like, dude, like, why are you inviting me over to your friend's house? This is what he did. You know? He does this one thing, he lives all over my living room floor. It's just, it's just, anyways. I did not offer that girl alcohol. He offered her alcohol. And oh. sorry to disappoint anyone. She didn't even drink anything. Oh, she okay. So there's no proof of her doing alcohol on any of his videos or your video or his videos because you didn't upload any videos with her. So there's no, so nobody saw her drinking any, any, any on any of Mara's videos. I don't know. Do they? Because I didn't really watch that full video, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. There's alcohol, there's tonic, there's coke. I have all kinds of stuff in the house. So if someone has the proof that I even gave this girl alcohol, knock yourself out, but I did not. Okay. Okay, totally understand. Okay, so then, okay, so Amara was upset. So the next day, so you told him to leave your house the next day? No. I mean, you say you gave him advance notice. Uh, what's advance notice? So the first night she came here, because of everything that transpired, she did not want to spend a the night there. I offered her another room, and that's where she spent the night. The next morning, I helped him with the letter, and she came back down. They were talking for a while, and that's when he told her to stop. You know, told you, you know, I don't need you. Uh, I have many girls going down. I don't need Ivan. I have many friends. This is what he's saying to me about me in my house. And he proceeded to say the same thing to my cousin. He told my cousin, he doesn't, you know, need to stay here. He can go out and do his own thing. You know, uh, I'm a very bad person. He said all this negative stuff about me in my own house. And I could hear it. And I say, calm. He left all day. When he came back that night, that's when I told Mawa, Mawa, you need to go by 11 o'clock tomorrow. This is after knowing why he said- 11 a.m.? 11 a.m. or p.m.? 11 a.m. a.m. Mawa told her, and told my cousin and constantly brags about how many people he knows, right? He has a lot of friends. And I know many people in DC know Mawa. Uh, at the same time, Mawa has money. You know, it's, it's, this is the cheapest man with money that I know. Mawa makes more money than me. So I don't need to host Mawa. He can go get a hotel. He can go, go sleep in somebody else's house. Like he doesn't need to be here. I gave this man notice in the evening, the night before, and I told him he has until 11 a.m. to leave because I wanted to leave around that time. And it's the same thing that I told the girl. She made arrangements, and he went online asking for another host that he went to hotel. And he has money. You know, so you believe, time, you believe he really has money? You've seen his bank account, the statements? I'm not going to get into the numbers, but I can tell you, yes, Mawa has money. He gets paid okay. very well on, on YouTube. And he makes more money than most people that donate. He, I can tell you. He makes more money than me. I work two jobs. <laughs> he makes more money than me. I can tell you that. You, so, you can confirm that. You can you know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. He does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so it's it's like now obviously every month is different. It's not like you know you know people who are on the salary. You know if you have a good month it goes up. If you have a bad month it goes down. But 
consistently he makes good enough money to survive and to maintain his lifestyle but he doesn't like to spend he doesn't like to spend and uh, and it's okay because when you have friends you can you know avoid some costs they don't blame you for that but he said time, yeah sorry he said he cannot afford life in america but you can afford to live here so if he makes a lot of money what can he not afford because he said himself he can afford to pay the bills here Listen, I think that most of us can say we cannot afford to live here, but we still make it happen. I think I think he's just saying it. Um, but it, it, it doesn't even matter because he's getting paid in U.S. dollar and he's building a home in Kenya. I think that's very smart of him to do. And uh, his money can certainly go a long way when you try to make the dollars and spend it overseas. I think it's smart. You know, I admire him for that. It's a great thing. The U.S. is expensive. Uh, but so if you have the option to do it differently, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean... Um, it is it is what it is you know but yeah i mean to to get back to the issue about the, the advanced loaded we can disagree on what it means uh but the guy who makes money that i know has the money and has many other supporters besides me i don't think that i have to 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 to, to suffer any longer by telling this guy say if this was about youtube views i would have just let my own people if this was about getting more subscribers i would have just told my wife to stay here I told him to go because this issue could have become a legal issue very fast. The, the, the situation was going south really quickly. And when he started talking shit about me, to her, to my cousin, and then text people that we're not friends, it's crazy. You know what's funny? After he sent that text message saying we're not friends, when he came home, the first thing he did, after I told him he had to go the next morning, he asked me if I can drop him to the head of Now, now it's like, I know your game now. You're using me, you know, like you 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 just want to take advantage of, you know, the ease of everything, and then you're gonna tell me to go away, basically. I told him I'm not gonna take it for that. I'll take it for that. The same thing I offered the next morning, he declined. Oh wow. Okay, so he left uh by eleven AM he was out of your house. So he left before the girl or the girl left after him. He he left after the girl. She said bye to me an hour about an hour prior. Okay. And then um, she said bye to him, and I could hear him on the door. This is a girl who doesn't want to spend the night with you, and you're telling her you can have beautiful babies, and you, you, you know, and all these different things. You know, I mean, I don't know if that approach usually works for him, but it was quite interesting why he chooses to sit with him. It was very interesting, and um, and yeah, I mean, he left an hour after her. I offered to take him to the metro. He called an Uber, and he was gone. He was gone just like that. Wow. So him and the girl were gone and that was it. And then so you guys are no longer friends. Um, you have a mutual friend called Sultan who's right now trashing you on YouTube. Yeah. Uh what's up with that? So Sultan is the guy that I always looked up to as far as like he's very calm, his demeanor and everything. You can watch my video and you can see when Mao was even calling us from the airport, Sultan was the one not trying to pick up the phone. When I arrived in New York, we were supposed to ride with Sultan at the airport. Sultan said, I don't trust that he's actually here. I know him. Let me, uh, let's just wait when he calls because I'm not moving until Mawa. He, he can wait. Mawa can wait. He even said on the video, he's not going to go to the parties, the house parties. So it's very interesting now that there's a situation like this. And uh, he turns his back on me because I called Sultan when that was happening. And I told Sultan because Sultan is another black man in America just like me. And I thought Sultan would understand the situation. Man, you have three guys, three black men in the house with an 18-year-old white girl, and Mao is acting very aggressively and harassing her. Yeah, you have to let her go. That was I was talking to Kungfu Sultan in confidence, so he understands the situation. But now he's using voice messages, putting them on video. You know, I showed this guy how to put videos on YouTube. You know, he, he was like posting weird things. He didn't know how to like move things from an SD card. I told him how to transfer things on his Mac. I told him everything when I was in New York. And now he's using that to become some kind of uh, reactor. You know, it's okay. Listen, I'm very uh, disappointed in re Sultan's reaction, but I'm, you know, it's, it's just a lesson. You know, be careful who you allow in your life. And uh, yeah, that's why the morning I saw he was posting uh, either Modesta or Black Beauty TV videos with that context. Like he wasn't even like either agreeing with them or disagreeing with them. He was just posting their videos. And I was like, Sultan, what are you doing? Because I don't understand why you just take another content creator's video and post on your channel. Like it doesn't make any sense. He said that was funny and stuff. I don't think it's funny, you know, to uh, to post people stuff like that, you know. 
So when I woke up and I saw he was talking about vipers and snakes in regards to that girl's pictures that I guess she took in my bathroom or whatever, yeah, she was here all day long. I, I, I had to take her, I had to buy her food, I had to buy her drink, she walked around the neighborhood, I gave her a house tour, she took all kinds of pictures in this house, she did. I don't know what's so shocking about this, so did my wife, my wife filmed all over this home. So now, you know, I post pictures late, people post pictures late all the time, now they want to say, listen, my friendship with Mawa is over. Maybe we'll never find. If I had his girlfriend, if I had the girl here, I keep saying girlfriend. It's not his girlfriend. If I had that girl here, I would do a live with her. I would, I would have a freaking collaboration with her, so we can both talk to you directly. I wouldn't hide that for what? Just because you spend a thousand dollars to a girl to fly doesn't mean you own her, and doesn't mean she's a sex object. Women are not objects. You can pay a thousand dollars for a flight. You still have to be a gentleman. She doesn't owe him anything, and then she's gonna go back to Europe. I told her, if you have money, ask your parents, pay this guy back if you need to. Do that. You know? But it's like, why do you think you have ownership of a woman because you paid for her flight? Yeah, she, she knows he wanted sex, but really, like, you just think as soon as she comes, you're going to snap your finger and you got her way, you got her way with her? If this girl was in this home, this is not something I would talk Because he doesn't own her, she's not property. And she can choose who she wants to be with, you know? She's not here. I'm sorry to break everybody's news here. She's not in my house. She's not. So, 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 what, the day she left before Mara, because Mara left after her. So she never came back to your place at all. No, I told this girl, listen, get some money. If you need help, let me know. And she got some money from parents and friends. She knows people around. And she left. She was uh, in D.C., I don't know, for maybe two or three days. Then she left for New York. You know, she hit me up when she got there. I told her to check in with me every night. This girl is 18 years old. You know what I mean? I want her to check in with me. And I, I have her parents' information as well to let them know that she's okay. I want to make sure this girl has a great time here and then flies back home safely. If anything goes wrong, I will feel really bad. She's young. She doesn't deserve that. But if she needs any help of any kind, so she can book another stay or whatever. I'll have to send the money to her so she can, you know, do what she needs to do in New York or wherever she chooses to go. But no, I, um, you know, first of all, I'm sorry, I'm all about to so much, so many things come to About Sultan, you know, I'm disappointed by what he did, but I hope that it was worth it. You know, I didn't have a problem with Sultan at all. He created a problem with me. So now we have one, you know, and that's okay. Um, about the girl, She's 18, she's young, I hope she's okay. She's checking every now with me, and I asked her to do so until she goes back. Mawa asked for the money back. I don't think she's gonna pay him back. Um, just, you know, I wanna make this clear to anyone watching this video. Um, paying a girl flight, there's certainly an expectations of sex. I think that any woman would agree, if a guy is paying your flight, he's expecting sex. And I think that the reason the guy is paying the ticket is because he wants sex. I think we can all be a real dog, we can agree on that. But where I don't agree with Mawa is that paying a girl a flight does not make her your sex object, and it doesn't give you the right to harass her if she's saying she needs time. I think that this girl was supposed to be here for two weeks, two and a half weeks. There's no reason to rush her. There's no reason to harass her. There's no reason to behave in this fashion. And then he turns around. She sent me the text messages. And he contacts her friends, and they're not responding. He's doing the same thing. He keeps texting, 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 texting. He doesn't take no for an answer. It's like something he's unable to process. And that's a problem. No means no. If a girl says no, that means no. I don't know what you have to keep saying the same thing. For four hours, he was begging this girl for sex in my house. Four hours. That night is crazy. It's insane. And the girl is like, no, but we can go to have sex in Mozambique Beach. No, we can go have sex in Mexico. No, we can do this. We can have beautiful kids. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. And I know people are accusing you of saying that you discourage this girl from going to Africa. No, okay, so this is the conversation. Uh, she was asking me that, is it okay for her to go to Africa by herself because her ex-boyfriend told her she should not. And I told her, listen, girl, you are 18 years old. You've never been to Africa. You're not a seasoned traveler. If I was you, I would go with someone or go with a guide or book a, a guide. Look, I'm a grown man. I travel with guides all the time. You watch my videos, I'm rarely by myself. And that's even when I go to Europe. When I go to Brazil, I got my friends with me. When I go to many places, I have guides. I went to Asia. 
recently. I was in Korea. I had a, a, you know, a guy with me. I'm meeting as many locals as I can that can help me navigate the streets. This girl is 18. She's not experienced. And I told her, yeah, if you can go with someone, it's better. But if you can book a guy, it's even better. That's what I said. I didn't tell her not to go. I'm from Africa, too. You know what I'm saying? What would I tell someone not to go there? You know, that's yeah. the other thing. You know? Yeah, no, no, I totally understand that because as a traveler, I would recommend any woman to be out there by herself without somebody to protect her. Yeah. You know, so I agree with that. So we are almost done. Um, I guess, um, so to people saying that you stole Aymara's girl, what's your final thought on that? First of all, I did not steal his friend. Let's stop using the word girl. Buying a plane ticket to a, a woman does not mean, or I should say, young lady. Buying a plane ticket to a young lady doesn't mean she's yours. It doesn't mean you own her. You have no ownership over a woman. A woman has the right to say no at any time she feels like it. And it has to be respected. And it's amazing how many people are saying he had the right to do anything. You don't have the right to do anything to any woman. Your own wife can tell you she doesn't want to sleep with you. Your own wife. You know, little less a girl you're just meeting for the second time. This is a very dangerous situation we're in. If men are in a place where they think because they bought a plane ticket to the girl, they can just undress her within a few seconds, that is crazy. There's something called seduction. Maybe he needs to learn that. There's something called style. There's something called game. And I'll tell you what, I did not steal his girl. And it was not his girl. And if I did, she'll be on my videos and I'll be filming her up and down because they say we're not friends. I don't owe Mawa nothing. And whoever feels like I can't do anything without him, check out my channel. I have close to 300 videos now. Maybe just eight or nine with Mawa. The rest of them are my own videos on my own. I travel all over the place. I certainly appreciated the collaboration, but there are many people in the world, many of the content creators that I'm going to be doing collaborations with. This, this page is turned and I'm moving on with my life. You know. I know, no, that's right. So, okay, let's quickly um just three more questions before we leave. Um, content creators, black beauty, modesta lifestyle. What are your thoughts on them right now with everything going on? Look, I I uh, I regret and I want to apologize to these both uh, uh, reactors for the position I took when Mawa did the live and he was trying to take the channel down. I uh, I was under pressure. I didn't want him to do it. I was under pressure by him, and as a friend. I did what I felt like I should do, which is be on his side. And I said on the live, people have the right to express themselves. Personally, I think they are funny. Uh, you know, they make a lot of funny comments and you know, they're, they're funny characters. And I think that there's a need for people to criticize. And a lot of the things that they say, I believe, can be helpful to someone like Mawa. He needs a lot of help, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and I think he should maybe listen to them a little bit more. And as much as he doesn't want to, uh, Modesta and Black Beauty, if you guys are watching this, he watches you guys. He, he, he lies to me that, oh, I'm not watching them. I called him several times watching. He's watching you guys uh, every day almost. He knows, what, he knows what's going on. There's also King of Travel, if you're watching this. He's watching you as well. And I want to apologize to you all for the position that I took in regards to canceling your channel and supporting Mawa on that demeanor. It was wrong. And, uh, and if I could go back in time, I would tell Mawa, this is not the right approach. You can criticize someone without saying that. But that being said, I don't like the way they're demean the demeaning and speaking about facts that they don't know nothing about, accusing me of being gay or sleeping with my cousin. Guys, I'm far from being gay. And anyone who knows me, <laughs> hey, believe what you want, but I'm not. I just don't believe in exposing my personal and private life on the internet. So therefore, I don't take pictures with women that I'm involved. I'm not, I'm not gay and they making comments like that is offensive. And uh, they're talking about my cousin in ways that I think is inappropriate. But hey, if that's their, their their niche, if this is what they do, more power to them. I, I have nothing else to say about them. And, uh, you know, I watch them sometimes. Most of the time they're funny, but a lot of the things that they talk about is not true. And uh, it is what it is. You know, they have the right to react to things, you know. I just regret that because um, even when he leaked, uh, Ma was leaked uh, three years ago from my living room. She could not get a hold of him to take that video down. I screamed at Mawa to take that video down. Screamed. Because she was texting me saying, hey, people are harassing me. They're blowing my phone up. And Mawa just looked at me and said, she can just change my number. You leak a girl's number online by accident. He didn't mean to. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, you say she can just change her number. And then he, he, he unfollows her on Instagram. 
This man does not understand the consequences of his action, and I don't have to take it anymore. And to whoever hosting him, just know this. Mawa does not have any friends and he means that. And, and you have to set your boundaries. If you don't want your house to be shown, make sure you are clear about that. And, and yeah, there's a lot more I can say, but as someone that used to be friends with him and someone that likes and respects his sister D, I am not going to say very personal negative things about Mawa that I know. All I can say is sexual harassment is not okay. Paying a woman's plane ticket does not give you ownership over her body. You need to show respect in order to get laid, and that's not something that he can he can do. Obviously, that's why he has to order, uh, uh, you know, basically bring a girl from Europe here. So right. I don't wish to continue talking about this, you know. But I think right. that anybody knows you and I. We don't really know each other, and you're a very straightforward person. So I felt like you are the perfect person to take this on and basically put out there. So that's why I reached out to you, and uh, and I'm thank you for your time. No, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I say that you, last thing, I say that you deleted your community post about Mara and all these things. So that's you starting a new leaf, right? Yeah, I don't. I felt like if I keep talking about this, that way is inviting the wrong person, just saying all kinds of stuff. And I just, I want this to end. I want to move on with my life. And mm -hmm. I want to move on to my content, which is what I'm doing. And the chapter with Mara is closed. I have many other videos that I filmed with him that I will not post at this time because it keeps this thing going. Those videos are mine, they're not Mawa's. I Ventures is my channel, it's not Mawa's. I'm gonna post the videos that I want, but due to the situation, I took a break on those videos. I will be posting them at some of the time, but right now, I'm not going to post them because I don't want people to keep talking about this. There's a lot more interesting things to talk about. This is about sexual harassment and it has, it has to be out there. No means no. This exactly. No, I totally agree. I really want to thank you for your time and thank you for um, your vote of confidence to, uh, to give me this, your side of the story. Um, you know, and I wish you all the best. Please shout out your channel one more time for our uh, viewers so they can subscribe to you. Yes. My channel is called Adventures. Oh, can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. To those people who feel like Omar was said I want to be like him. He needs to provide names of any girl that he feels like I want to take from him, because I didn't. I never slept with any of his girlfriends. Never. Every person that I met with Mawa, I'm friends with. Because I never slept with any of his girls, so he needs to stop this nonsense. And he doesn't have any wife, he doesn't have any girlfriends. If it's girls, he hooked up with them and moved on. So I don't know what he's talking about. And um, so yeah, my channel is name is Adventures. Mawa and I disagree just about everything. We disagree on content creation. We disagree on thumbnails. We disagree on everything. The people who think I'm trying to imitate his, 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 his creation. Watch my videos. We are nothing alike. I am Ivan and he's Mawa. I respect what he does. And I'm me. I'm going to say me. I'm not going to be like him in any way, shape, or form. He was a good friend. We no longer there. And I'm thankful for the good times. And life goes on, guys. Check out my channel, Adventures. Take a look and let's keep on moving. Let's talk about positive things. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I totally appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much. See you. All right, good people. This is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Please uh, feel free to leave your comment below with any thoughts that you may have. And like and share this video. Thank you. Have a good one. God bless.